How do you lift weights to punch harder? Watch this. Our next caller is Jessica from Wisconsin. Hey, Jessica, how can we help you? Hi, guys. So great to meet you. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. And thanks for all you do in the fitness space. Um, uh, my question is around, I think you had a question about this a couple weeks ago, but around building power for boxing. So just a little bit of background. Um, I just turned 40 years old last month. Um, and I have been training and boxing, um, mostly for fitness at first, but I hired a trainer and have been, uh, practicing boxing for a couple of years and actually am going to compete in my first, uh, boxing bout Hell yeah. in April. Wow. Hell yeah. Look at you. So, Really excited about that through our, it's a charity event called White Collar Boxing. So um, I work with a, an amazing coach um, on my skills. I run four to five times a week for cardio, for conditioning, but I'd really like to be able to uh, build up some power in my punches and would love to know what you'd recommend as far as a MAPS program or other uh, programming for uh, strength to kind of complement the rest of my training. Yeah. So how, how many days a week are you are you training boxing specific right now? Uh, three to four, um, sometimes four to five, depending. Uh, it's usually pretty low key. We're just really working on footwork and um, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. But uh, yeah, we do uh, we do get lots of practice in. All right, and then you spar? Are you sparring right now? Yeah, we spar one to two times a week. Oh, cool. Full headgear, the whole deal, and you guys are hitting each other? Yeah, whole, full headgear. Head Although we are using 16-ounce gloves, so. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, once a week. Once a week of resistance training is going to be plenty. Yeah. Uh, MAPS performance. Yes, probably, performance, please. Yeah, that would be your best bet. I would do pick one foundational workout because the program has got three foundational workouts a week. That's way too much for what you're doing. I would go one foundational workout a week. Pick Pick your choice, whichever one you want and go through mass performance. And then the mobility sessions, you could throw this, those in wherever. But once a week is going to be plenty with what you're currently doing. Any more, and you're probably going to overdo it and maybe even take away your ability to practice what's most important right now, which is your, your boxing skill. Yeah, and I mean, generating more ground forces is something that uh, would I would recommend as a focus. Uh, and how you do that is um, really like connecting your entire body. So like connecting your hips, your legs involved with your upper body. So that's a big focus of driving, uh, you know, through from your foot to your hips snapping and getting that rotation, getting everything super connected and be able to, to uh, drive as much force as possible, uh, you know, all the way up into, you know, your shoulder and your arm on release. So it's this whole fast, loose approach. So you have to, you have to kind of, it's, it's complicated, right? Because athletics, you're always dealing with like, um, you know, how much, how much force I can, I can create, uh, but then also control. And so, you know, there's the control aspect to it of being loose, but also being tight when you need to be tight and, and being able to generate, uh, you know, that muscle contraction to really like whip uh, that arm across and, and connect the arm with the hip. So, um, you know, there's stuff in, in MAPS performance you'll see with the stick where we do this, you know, laterally um, and we really drive it into the wall. And these types of exercises really help you to kind of focus that and channel that type of uh, power uh, from your hips. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, uh, when you get close to your, your actual match for at least the two weeks leading up to it, I wouldn't do any resistance training. So I, I wanted to say that. So you can do resistance training and about two weeks before you want to cut it out and focus entirely on what you're going to be doing uh, with your coach. And strength and muscle definitely play a role in power, but technique uh, and speed play a bigger role in power. So a much smaller guy can hit a lot harder than a bigger guy uh, just through technique and skill. I'm sure your coach, you probably, if you've asked your coach this, they'll tell you the same thing. They'll tell you, look, you know, you can be big, strong, but if you don't have the speed and the technique, you're going to lose all that power. So mm -hmm. it, it, most of it comes from there. So what you're going to get from the strength training is just more uh, security. Muscle recruitment. Yeah, more security in your joints. You're going to be, there's going to be a protective element, maybe more stability. I noticed in your question, you wrote down that you have some hyper mobility in the shoulder and elbow. So it might, you know, kind of help with that. So, but yeah, mass performance, that would be the perfect program. One foundational workout a week and just leave it at that. And then you can even go through the phases, you know, phase one, two, three, and, and four leading up to uh, your match. And again, two weeks before, I would stop all resistance training. Uh, I don't have much to contribute uh, to what, what the guys already said. I agree with everything they said, except for I would add, um, I would defer to some of the, our friends that are experts in this. If you're not following Tony, Tony Jeffries 
and Phil Daru, I think uh, they they put out tremendous content that's completely centered around punching and fighting. So, oh, that's um, great. yeah, they're they're far more knowledgeable than us. We've actually had both both of them on the show before, so you could search them back if you want to listen to the episode. But they both uh, put out a lot of good content on both Instagram and YouTube. Both Phil Daru and then uh, and then Tony Jeffries. So check out what they have uh, have to offer. And then, like the guy said, I, I think the one day a week foundational training from performance is great. And then the way I would dictate how much of the mobility sessions I do, it would it would uh, it would reflect how much work I'm putting in boxing that week. So let's say it's I heard you say sometimes it's five or six days a week of boxing. So if it's an intense week of boxing. I may only do a mobility day or none, just the one foundational day. If you have like a lot of light work, like a lot of light footwork and like speed drills, but not nothing really intense, um, I might add two or three mobility sessions to that. So use the mobility sessions to complement your workload that you're doing because uh, you're not going to get huge gains from that. I think it's more about helping you recover and staying mobile and connected. So use that based off of your workload uh, that you're doing in boxing. Boxing comes first. One day of training as your foundational for weightlifting and then mobility intermittently thrown in there based off of your load. That's great. And just a real quick follow up to that as far as mobility work, should I be avoiding the mobility in my arms and shoulders? Because my right shoulder, you know, I've hyperextended it a couple of times. I, I popped it out. It's actually uh, a mm -hmm. real fun story at the gym because I'm the only girl and I didn't cry when it happened. Um, and, uh, you know, I've hyperextended my shoulder a couple of times. So should I be avoiding that and not to keep it too mobile or should yeah, I more well, lean into that think, to make functional mobility? Yeah. Think of it less as a uh, range of motion increase and more of like gaining strength in that range of motion. So, you know, taking that incrementally and being able to generate uh, tension there. So like having an isometric focus where we're, we're kind of squeezing our way through it and just really gradually going through each checkpoint of each angle. Um, so that way, you know, you're able to stabilize it properly. Yeah, so yeah, proper mobility work includes strengthening, connecting. So that means it'll help your situation. So you're not doing like lots of stretches or just trying to move uh, through different ranges of motion without connecting. That would make things worse. You got to stay tense and connect through the mobility work. So remember that when you're when you're looking through the mobility a, sessions, a good example of that have you seen? Uh, Jessica, have you seen the the Maps Prime Pro webinar that I did um, that was free? Um, it's been a little while. I watched it uh, probably six months ago, so I need to go back. <laughs> okay, so do that. A good example of what the guys are saying right now is, I think the second or third exercise I do is handcuff with rotation. Um, mm -hmm. And when you hear Justin one. and Sal talking about, you know, creating tension the entire time through the movement, watch how I do that movement and how I coach it. And all of your mobility work should reflect that. It should mm -hmm. have this kind of intense, slow, con staying connected type movement. Think of it less of like a stretch where you're trying to get a greater longer range of motion and like justin said you're being you're more connected through the whole range of yeah motion. adam gives really good cues for that and i think if you take those cues and then you also apply it to the one i did for you know checking you know with our compass tests and prime it's it's just um it kind of goes through very specific ones for the shoulder that would be helpful as well but you do have to have that kind of intensity applied to to make sure it's it's you know w w the focus is right and by the way that's a great way to kind of prime the body before you go into any of your stuff so if you're getting ready to go throw punches if you're getting ready to do your workout you could prime uh with those movements heading into it and you're only going to be better connected throw better punches be stronger when you lift so those are movements that you can you can do uh, for recovery on days that you're not training, you could also do that as as priming stuff to get you ready before you start throwing punches. Awesome. That's great. I'm really excited. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I wasn't sure which direction to go. I have I have several of your programs, but I don't have performance. So really excited to dig in and uh, and get going with it. Cool. Thank you so much for your time. We'll send awesome. that to you. Yeah. Good luck. Best of luck to you. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. No you too. Yeah, the whole um, like how to add resistance training to sp heavy, intense sport, you know, training, it's supplemental, right? Mm -hmm, when definitely. strength training becomes the focus is when you're a strength athlete. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, if you're a boxer or a football player or a baseball player. Or you're player, in the off-season off where you can off de- yeah. devote it completely to that. But yes, 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 yes. Good point. Very, very good point. But, you know, she's focusing so much on boxing. She's amateur. She's new at this. That, you know, one day a week. One day is pl- it's plenty. It's yeah. going to give you enough strength. It's going to do a lot. Yeah. going to give you some stability if you do it right and complement kind of what she's doing. Well, like you said, if if the strength training at all, even in the slightest way, impedes on her current boxing training, then it's only going to hurt her skills yep. you know so and the better you are at throwing a punch and the faster you are throwing a punch the because ko right she was looking for she wants to ko somebody which is great right so <laughs> that's her goal and so her speed and technique is going to play a much bigger role in that than her increasing her bench or deadlift or yep. shoulder press totally hey if you enjoyed that clip you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe